This is my CZ Scorpion Evo 3 S1 pistol that is legally registered as an SBR at this point. Um, I'm done with the build on this thing and all my modifications and I really like the way it turned out and I have uh, three parts on here that I designed and 3D printed myself and have been running them for a while now. This is a factory CZ Scorpion stock. I ordered it from the Czech Republic. Um, it is three position telescoping and right side folding. It fits really nice and tight to the receiver and also I finally figured out what that little notch in the magwell is for. That's where the stock clips into. So it doesn't hold in there super tight, but it makes it so it's not flopping around. So that's pretty sweet. So really happy about that. I ordered it from cz-parts.com. Um, they do ship from the Czech Republic, but I got it shipped here in three days for like $25. The stock was $275, which is $100 more than like the HBI adapter with the Magpul Zukov stock. But I just love the look and feel of this thing and also, um, now that I know it folds flat to the receiver and also latches onto the magwell there, I'm even uh, more pleased with it. And the latch is actually on the butt pad of it. So if your stock is extended, it won't latch anymore. So it has to be in the uh, uh, completely collapsed position for it to latch onto the magwell properly. Details to mention on this stock. Release button's right here. It's aluminum. This part that goes over the back of the receiver is aluminum. This is one whole piece of polymer. Everything's polymer on it. This is polymer. There's no recoil pad, no rubber, or nothing. Is this worth $275? No, not really. A Magpul Zukov stock probably would have been better. But it just looks so cool. And it's a factory stock. And it clips onto the receiver like it's supposed to and stays folded very nice and tight to the receiver and of course you can shoot it like this as well. Uh, I do have a vertical grip on it. This is a Magpul uh, M-Lock vert grip and I'm right handed so I have my pressure pad for my Streamlight uh, ProTac rail mount one right here on a uh, Arisaka Scout light mount and these are little plastic uh, Picatinny cable guides. Got like a eight pack of them on Amazon for like 12 bucks. They're pretty sweet. I'd recommend them. Um, and the mount that this is on is actually a piece that I designed and 3D printed. Um, and I'm really happy with how it came out and where it's mounted. And it works just right for momentary and constant on for a right-handed shooter using this vertical grip. I tried a whole bunch of different safeties on the left side here for my thumb on the right side. I have the uh, short AK style safety from HB Industries. There's a lot of HB Industries parts on this gun. Um, I tried HB Industries, two of their aluminum ones here. I tried a Magpul one, a Strike Industries one, and all of them had just a little thing that I didn't quite like. So I designed and 3D printed my own out of PETG, and I'm really happy with it. I've ran this for hundreds of rounds. It's still functioning great. PETG is pretty tough stuff. I also uh, 3D printed a tiny little gray insert out of PLA here and epoxied it in for the uh, indicator. I designed this trigger and I wanted a flat face trigger, but I didn't necessarily like the looks of the, uh, the uh, Theta trigger from HB Industries or the, the tandem cross trigger or anything like that. And the way this attaches is just a little square pocket with a roll pin that goes through it. So it's a super easy attachment method. So I designed this flat face trigger with a little bit of a, of a uh, 
bump at the end of it for indexing the finger. Right here, there's a little extra bit of plastic that hangs down out of this receiver right here, and that is actually an over-travel stop. So the trigger physically hits the back of the plastic receiver right here and stops right there. So there's pretty much no over-travel to this thing. And I made sure that uh, it, you know, breaks pretty close to 90 degrees. And also I uh, pushed it forward a bit and because I have long fingers. So now my fingers straight along the receiver when I have my index finger pad right on the trigger. So um, really happy with how this trigger came out. I've had this on here for a few hundred rounds. Uh, nothing's broken yet so far. So I'm going to keep running it. It feels really good. I really like it. It's got nice uh, contours and radius on it. And I just, I'm a sucker for flat face triggers. And uh, I wanted to take some time to design my own. So I did. Before I designed and 3D printed this trigger and installed it in the gun, um, I did some trigger work. I smoothed everything up and put the HBI uh, reduced power trigger spring kit in there. I actually have a video uh, to that uh, uh, showing that work that I did to smooth everything up. I'll link in the description down to that old video. Magpul grip obviously added some stippling to the front and the back strap because it wasn't grippy enough. The sides feel pretty good. Uh, if you loosen this screw, there's actually a slot and you can slide the grip back and forth to adjust your uh, reach to the trigger. But it leaves a stupid looking gap between the grip and the receiver here that you can see through. So as I said, uh, with the trigger, I just designed the face of this to be pushed forward a little bit more where I want it. This is a HB Industries Pro Stock uh, magazine release. You can hit it with your finger, but I like stripping my mags like this. Works really good. Um, this is the HB Industries Paxi Sapper, I believe it's called. I think I might have the uh, name of it covered up with my pressure switch, but it's polymer, it's lightweight, it's pretty cheap. I think it was like 60 bucks. It fits great, it looks great, it feels good. Um, it's got a nice little integrated finger stop right here. Um, and I'm really happy with it. This is the HB Industries Pro Stock charging handle. It's nice and extended. Um, and I like that better than the really short factory one. This is the HB Industries uh, takedown pin that is uh, slightly oversized and um, it makes the uh, lower receiver tighter in the upper. So that was a nice cheap upgrade to make things feel a little bit more solid. This is a Strike Industries QD point uh, that goes in between the hand guard and the receiver and there's a little dovetail in the barrel trunnion in there. Um, because I just like QD points for my slings. And then right here, I actually have a Parker Mountain Machine QD point that bolts through this little sling loop uh, coming. So I'll have a QD point in the front and the back. I thought looking at the pictures, maybe this was going to be a QD point, but it's not. And I like to run my slings on the far side. Obviously, that would get in the way of the stock folding. And I don't want to really run it on this side because that would be a little bit awkward. And also, I think if I put Magpul QD... Uh, sockets there. I don't even know if A, they would fit, but B, they might um, get in the way of the stock folding up against the receiver on the other side and latching into place like it's supposed to. For a muzzle device, I went with a rugged three lug. Um, for my rugged obsidian suppressor, uh, I have this little ring on here is uh, protecting the M18 threads underneath it. This comes with the CZ Scorpion and then this uh, three lug um, threads on to the half by 28 uh, threads in front of that and uh, it's just a uh, I've heard a lot of pros and cons about three lug uh, suppressor mount systems, but It works great for me um, It's really solid never had any issues with it coming loose or anything like that um, And you know if you match the three lug muzzle device to the suppressor that should probably be about as good of a uh, three lug interface as you can get I'm really happy with this Red Dots Crimson Trace Rad Max. Let's see if I can 
just got a nice, nice big window there and a single 3MOA dot. And then this is actually a uh, Crimson Trace brand lower one third co witness mount for an AR, is, is the height that it is, but it may be hard to see. My iron sights co witness right through the little hole in that mount, so that ended up working perfectly. I just want to add a quick word about um, 922R compliance and also the ATF e forms one process. Uh, ATF e forms filing a form one on this super straightforward. NFA Gun Trust on YouTube has a really great video that walks you through the whole process. One thing I did is I went through NFA Gun Trust and paid 55 bucks or whatever the hell it was to uh, have an electronic fingerprint uh, file made for me that I attached to the Form 1 when I submitted it through ATF eForms. It got approved in uh, 29 days, I think. Uh, it was really quick. Uh, before that, I had a, a, a AR-15 Form 1 get approved in 15 days. So uh, really easy to file a form one on this guy. Um, now in terms of 922R compliance, I will put a uh, diagram on the screen and put it up there for a few seconds so anyone who wants to look at it can pause. And I will also link in the description to uh, the page that that came from. With 922R compliance on these, there is 16 items that once you put a stock on it, apply to 922R compliance. And of those 16, only 10 of them max can be made outside the United States. So that means you need to, on the CZ Scorpions, swap out six parts. The things uh, that I have swapped out are magazine base plates and followers. I made sure I got some that were made in the United States. And if you use Magpul magazines, you get one extra um, part for 922R compliance in the magazine body as well. Uh, but with the CZ mags, I did the base plate and the follower. So uh, there's two items right there. Grip, three, trigger, I made that in the United States. Four, handguard, five, muzzle device, six. So that means um, I don't have to have a made in the United States stock. And I don't. This is a factory CZ one made in the Czech Republic. So that is 922R compliance on these things. I will link to the page where I found that information. It's kind of confusing and weird at first. And I don't think anyone in the history of ever has been charged for not complying with 922R. But, you know, if you're going to go through the, uh, the trouble to register it um, as an SBR and pay your tax stamp and do all the extra hoop jumping that you have to, you might as well make sure you're uh, complying with 922R as well.